Aloha and welcome to Holistic Hawaii TV. Uh, my name is Karen Gomes. I'm Claire Bajo. And I'm Zach Royer. And today we are here with Maxima Forsland, uh, who is the uh, founder of Kukui Lani Healing. Uh, welcome, Maxima, and thank you for um, being a part of our show today. Um, today we are going to um, experience uh, some of uh, Maxima's healing modalities. Uh, earlier, it took five minutes for her to uh, heal an injury that I that I currently have on my right arm, um, which we'll be sharing with you uh, later. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, chat with you about some of your um, your experiences in healing and and what is it that you bring to the table. Um, I believe that I um, bring love and light. I had a light experience when I was younger, and I was afraid of the light for like thirty years. And people, we, we say uh, people have fear. And you can't imagine how I felt whenever I saw this ball of light come to me. And I, w I wouldn't accept it. I was afraid. I didn't know what that light was. But for some reason, in accepting the light, it was like the best thing I ever did in my life. I went through the light when it came, finally came um, at the age of 40. And, and it, now it's actually what I work with. Mm -hmm. So I, I explain that story because um, when you have fear, a lot of times that fear will become your friend. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that's what I bring to people. I, I, I work with the universe, you can say the universe or God, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's just al always being present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and have the passion. Everything that you do uh, would be a passion. And I think that's what people feel. Mm -hmm. So was that what changed you when the light came? Were your thoughts uh, different? Because I know you had mentioned you had had an experience with the light as a child. What was that experience that caused this experience at 40 to have you to consider that and then realize that it was your life's calling maybe? Um, going through the light gave me confidence. So uh, you can say that a lot of us don't feel that we're enough. And, um, and that's what I felt. I, I went through so much in my life and a lot of people will say, well, I look at you, I, don't, I didn't realize that you've gone through all of that in your life. And um, i probably gone through more because I felt like I was the black sheep of the family. Um, and I didn't think that I was smart enough. So that light um, just gave me confidence. It made me feel lighter. Mm -hmm. And it made me look at the world. I was like, wow, actually Earth this is heaven, mm -hmm. and um, everything was brighter, lighter. Um, it, it's really hard to explain when you get to that point because, um, and I always say that mm -hmm. I, I don't look at other people, I just look at myself first, mm -hmm. and I compete against myself. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm constantly making myself better, mm -hmm. but not better. Um, I, I really never looked at myself physically. Mm -hmm. I, I really never weighed myself um, I've always looked at myself spiritually mm -hmm. to say, okay, so what is it am I missing? And then as I work with my clients, I listen to them and I say, okay, what can I learn from my client today? Mm -hmm. What can my client give me? And I'm not looking at it, what am I giving them? I'm saying, okay, how can they help me? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm, because I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at it uh, at a different point of view. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, I, I could pay my clients, but it's like, okay, so what, what are you going to give me? What are you going to share with me today? And that's that energy mm -hmm. that we feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, and it, it, you can say it's an exchange of energy um, and a release. Mm -hmm. so. so in a typical uh, treatment that you would give, um, do you prepare the client um, in any way to have them receive this? Are you any? Are there any questions that you would ask 
a client so that they are open to your healing or what what preparation takes place for them you know the client to receive the experience as you would um, I would say that um, when they come to me they're on their journey mm. and they're ready for it and there's really um, I say the only thing that I would say is are you in acceptance to a uh, healing do you would, would you like to try it and from there they're on their journey mm. because either I have to sense whether or not they need to hear the words or to just be peaceful and quiet so that they can receive mm -hmm. so everybody's different mm -hmm. I don't really have a set guideline mm -hmm. and I just have to be open to for them um, to be on their journey mm -hmm. so you go with the flow of the client the client is feeling a certain way you just let him or her say what they need to say about it and then you work from there I see mm -hmm. do you also perform like group healings or are you more one-on-one -on -one individual basis I've done group healings of up to 50 people wow. and um, in October somebody had asked me to do uh, 600 people so wow. so that will be interesting but at, when I do a group of people um, we're all um, sending love and light into the room and then the, you can feel the room start to heat up because usually um, when you start off the, the room is cold there are stuck energies in, in certain areas and um, the sessions help to share that love and light and we we share love and light to um, the universe so that the universe feels that warmth mm -hmm. so do you use certain tools to uh, gauge the uh, current temperature or you know how the healing is before you know you take it before the healing and after the healing do you um usually I don't because I I go with um, what the body tells me but in order for me to teach people how my energy works I use an infrared camera and then I also use um, hangers to to show them how you can detect where stuck energy is mm. dousing mm -hmm. dousing hangers yes mm -hmm. See? So uh, for me, because a lot of people say, oh, do you use crystals? Do you, um, I don't use anything. I, all I do is use my um, uh, hands and then feel the energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So other, other things, I, I call them accessories because it's like what, what other people, uh, to, it's just a teaching tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, because when you perform the, the, the healing on, on my, my right hand, right now, like I was saying earlier, right now I still feel like um, there's still healing in progress, even though it's been, what, 10, 15 minutes ago mm -hmm. um, since we've done the healing on my hand. But I like, um, like you've mentioned, now it's like the angels are taking over, you know, yes. and completing the, the healing. So... Um, not sure if you notice I can keep on doing this with my hands, but I just feel like I need to keep my my right my right arm um, not constricted right now. It needs to con finish its process. And um, as I was mentioning earlier, I couldn't squeeze, and now I can I can squeeze uh, with all of my might because your your yeah. your muscles. Um start felt that it needed to relax mm -hmm. because I did you feel that you were holding the muscles it did yeah yes it did feel that way and then once it once I guess it, it the energy started flowing and releasing that's when I felt like my muscles began to relax but what was interesting it wasn't just where the injury um, is located every muscle from even under my arm mm -hmm. and up to my shoulder I felt a difference and then I felt like a flow towards the end and the cold sensation that I felt was under on my palm mm. so it was really interesting it's really interesting so was the cold sensation the energy moving through you or what did it you felt feel? like that it felt like it was trying to it was whatever I don't know if you want to use the word toxins or stagnant energy it was trying to it was trying to be pushed out that's what it felt like and as the, 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 the coldness that I felt, it felt, it, it, it seemed like 
because now there's room for my body to breathe or for my arm to breathe where it's like okay I'm out I'm releasing already mm -hmm. and I still kind of feel a, a sense of uh, a, a tingly. A yeah and uh, still a little cold sensation mm. you know so interesting thank you yeah that <laughs> is interesting because the photography of the areas uh, showed a heat mm -hmm. temperature where there was some pressure mm -hmm. I mean where there was some built-up energy mm -hmm. and it was it was a it's a heat sensor mm -hmm. and but yet you feel cold mm -hmm. so that's very interesting that mm -hmm. the you know that it was a gauge of heat but that there's you feel cold energy going through well that. while she was uh, performing the healing on me I felt warmth I felt the warmth here where, actually where she had her hands so I felt the warmth here and I felt the warmth here and then the warmth started um, going throughout my body but as the healing was uh, coming to a close that's when the the cold sensation happened on my palm. I see. Because mm -hmm. yeah. was, but I felt the energy releasing at that time. And then, I m remember I mentioned you'll feel heat, mm -hmm. and then you'll start to release the heat, and then mm -hmm. it turns to cold. Mm -hmm. And that's wh where the healing takes place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what kind of um, uh, healing would you call this? I know you call it kukui lani, but w is it an energy movement, or is it a mixture of Reiki and the uh, indigenous uh, healing modalities were? Um, as far as Reiki, healing touch, um, and what I do, it's all um, energy healing. And I, can, I guess you can say that what I do is more intuitive. So um, wh when I do the healings at the hospital, they, they said that, oh, you know, normally they have it's like system, it is, there's a certain system that you use. You have your hands placed in a certain area where um, the hospital said, oh, if it comes through because you're intuitive, just let your intuition, you know, do the healing. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it works because I, I listen to the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the heat because I can, I can, I can feel where the, the heat is and I, okay, so that's where the intense heat, it, I, heat is. I leave my hand there until I feel that the heal, healing went through. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a focus of energy coming from the universe that comes through you. Do you feel, is, is it similar to Reiki where it, I believe the, they feel that the thought comes, or en the energy flow from the universe comes through them and out to the hands where they are directing it? Is that, is that similar? Is that um, part of? You know what, because um, I, I work with um, another healer and he had told me that um, I work my healing in like the ninth dimension. So a lot of it, um, the healing is more of a physical, um, and I think I, I work at a higher dimension. So you, maybe you can say that would be the universe. It's, it, um, ninth dimension would be like in, in, infinity, really going out mm -hmm. to the universe or even going beyond. Mm -hmm. And so I've, ha I've worked with a, a lady who did, um, oh, I forget what it's called, mat matrix, um, where she can see certain things like if you're, you're meditating in a room mm -hmm. and she can see certain things like certain colors of the room and what I did with her because she said oh she said Maxima let's work together and see what we can come up with with the people in in the group and what I did I tested her because I said okay I'm just gonna go ahead and put a turquoise um, crystal where she can see it above the people and it's funny because she says, oh, wow, and I can see the turquoise water in Hawaii. And I'm like, wow, she saw that. Wow. Yeah. And then so um, what the, um, every time when I put something up, she saw. Mm. So wow. I says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put her out into the universe and see what happens. And she was like, wow, 
it's out of this world. It, this is really <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and then so after the session, she looked at me and she says, oh my God, Maxima, I can't believe that you opened me up. <laughs> wow. So I help people, I help um, healers to do more than what they're, what um, their capacity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just to teach them that they could go at a better place or I don't know, in, in, infinity. Exactly. I don't know how to explain it. Tapping into to, the energy yeah. of the universe to help you mm -hmm. instead of thinking you do it, maybe. Is that, would that be? <coughs> yeah, and, and, and that's the thing that I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking, I guess you can say you that. Like a I'm, conduit? Or? Yeah, I'm just the vessel. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that um, you can ask to go be bigger mm -hmm. than what you are. We are all bigger than what we are, but we make ourselves look so small. Mm -hmm. And we we have we all have the power to do it, mm -hmm. or that we think that our it's just our spirit in our body, but yet our spirit is bigger than our body, mm -hmm. and it seems like you tap into that because and, you, and we're you speak all one. of dimensions. So you can you mm -hmm. can imagine that when we work as one, we're bigger because um, the unit like when you do healings. Because, like I say, we're always thinking of the physical, but it's all energy. Like this whole, like this room is full of energy. It's not air. Air is energy. Empty space is energy. Like the space between the notes when you're when you're listening to music, mm -hmm. the spaces between the notes is what makes, makes the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the space mm -hmm. between our thoughts are the actual thoughts that dictate, you know. Uh, what what happens it seems so yeah I, I yeah and our subconscious because mm -hmm. our subconscious mm -hmm. yes so anything that we we don't see is actually what's holding holding us together mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so all the, the space I mean the universe we think that the universe is just open area I mean it that's everything <laughs> oh and it's the air we breathe and it's a hundred percent of our bodies mm -hmm. is uh, you know, oxygen and spirit and air. So I can see how you consciously directing your thoughts or your energy, would you say? I mean, the, do thoughts come through you that you're directing through the body? I mean, like you said, you projected a turquoise, you know, crystal and she saw the color mm -hmm. do you do that when you're healing someone I mean what 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 were your thought what were the thoughts going through your mind when you were healing Karen the strongest healing is when there's no thoughts when you're humility what is the word hum being humble mm -hmm. humility and that's the strongest healing that you can ever receive is just wow. to be. So and you're it's hard, yeah, because it, we're always thinking, okay, what am I, what, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to think? And every time when you get there, you're analyzing. You're analyzing yourself. You're not trusting the universe, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're saying, am I doing this right? I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just being. The person is just being. Um, Emptiness is the strongest, mm. and it's hard to, to teach that. And um, and I I always go back again to passion because I can just sit and crochet and sew, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. This is like I'm not thinking, mm -hmm. but I'm present, and mm -hmm. this is so awesome. So it sounds like it's an instinctual. Uh, action that you take you your instincts are telling you that this you're open to it and you follow your heart you follow your passion you follow your inspiration and so when you're sitting with someone that thought of just being present but being humbled by the service of the spirit that calls you is is what moves through you and then you can feel the heat or you can feel the temperature? Of yes, because when, when you're just being and you're not thinking, I'm thinking, wow, 
this is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're thinking it's amazing, mm -hmm. I'm thinking the same thing. Right. Yeah. Because I'm humble to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, this is me. This is, wow, mm -hmm. this is the universe doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always say, because it's, it's like, like, people talk about what I've done, and I will look behind me and like, okay, I, that's not me. I know that there's something, they're talking to some someone who did that. It wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I remember you ta uh, talking about, uh, at one point, someone told you that you had uh, ancestors, about 10 uh, Hawaiian ancestors, uh, spirits around you. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, there actually were a, a couple of groups of people. And one group that I was doing um, training with, they said, yeah, um, when you were doing the healing around the pool, because we, were, we, were, we, we did a little test and we were, we were like in a spa in a pool, and the lady said, wow, there were like 10 people. I saw images of them and they were um, dark skin, uh, dark hair. And I didn't know who that was. And then it, there was another group, and actually it was a gentleman, and usually, you know, um, uh, he, he was embarrassed to say, and the, he, he didn't hear this, the other person. It was a totally different group. And he said the exact same thing. He says, yeah, there were two, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ten people with dark hair, dark skin, and I can't mm -hmm. tell you because they were just images. And I'm just thinking, maybe that's why I came to Hawaii, because maybe... Um, these spirits guided me here, and it's these uh, 10 images that keep following me. But I had um, one uh, grandmother, so grandmother's an indigenous grandmother, and she said, she, she, um, put my I, she put her hand on my heart, and she looked around and she says, oh my God, Maxima, she says, this room is full which means that I, I, I'm assuming that she meant full of spirits. Mm. And I, t I, I bring them with me. And they do the work. I'm not doing the work. That's, that's what I believe. And I feel that um, they're around me. And people, like y you mentioned, what, what, what was that? And I, I think they're here. They knew that we were going to do this session, and they were here. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, I, and, um, and that's the being humble um, because if if you're closed and um, you, you're thinking different thoughts of not a loving thoughts you won't feel them around you mm. but you do have them that's what I believe mm -hmm. everybody has them but you know what it, it says we, we totally numb ourselves we numb ourselves um, everything um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, we're, we're numbed. But, and we're always thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I good enough to, for anybody? Any, all those thoughts, they're, they're, you're constantly analyzing, but then if you put trust in your heart, trust in the universe, everything comes. Mm -hmm. And that energy, it, uh, everybody will feel that loving, love and light, mm -hmm. that energy. Right. So it sounds like you have an element of trust that the universe is going to provide what you need and what your client needs, and then you're open to that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And, it, it, and the, the same thing with regards to the world, but I know we, that we see war, um, we see people, we, we have the compassion for other people, but you don't realize how powerful you are because all you have to do is provide prayer um, and it works. Mm -hmm. And I I totally believe that that works. Oh, yeah. The power I, of prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw it in 9-11. Uh, you know, when that incident happened, there were people all over the world that said, God bless you. You know, there were, we prayed so many groups at the office prayed all of a sudden. There were just people all over the world taking moments of peace and prayer and I believe that it helped us to uh, recover from that uh, 
as a as a nation, I believe that we got closer because that humbled us to get down on our knees or to join hands together as Go one. Together. And our thoughts were for peace. Our mm-hmm. thoughts were for love. Our thoughts were for healing of whoever was affected by this. And I, I I'm sure that you have you know you may have been doing your work at that time too to send their loving prayers and thoughts to those that had been you know involved in, you know, and also to help better the world, it seems. I mean, do you see that your healing is, uh, when you're working on one person or 600 people, do you visualize it for the world, or what are your thoughts on, you know, think? Uh, um, I'm the vessel, and they're doing the work. So whether it's um, the person doing the work or the spirits that are there, that are supposed to be there, that we're all doing the work together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and in an earlier segment, segment with uh, Gavin, uh-huh. um, you mentioned something about um, heating the spirit first. Uh-huh. Can you um, enlighten us more about what you mean by healing the spirit, or how do you sense the spirit is? Because is, are, the, are the spirits ever in uh, a troublesome uh, State. state or is it is it a connection that we, we need to do to connect ourselves to the spirit? So can you enlighten I us on that? I think a lot of people have lost um, the spirit, and it doesn't necessarily mean religion. Uh, spirit means um, uh, what you have in your heart, whether you're being happy or um, peaceful. Mm-hmm. And if you're not happy or peaceful, you've lost the spirit. You lost the connection. Mm-hmm. Whether um, it could be just yourself, you lost your heart. You, you, and and you know that terminology where, where they say, "I feel like I'm beside myself. I I feel like I I'm not myself." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's where you lost your spirit because you're no longer your true self. Whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're no longer whole. Mm-hmm. And it has to be a mind, body, and spirit. But right. in, in order to um, heal your spirit, um, you, you need to ask yourself, well, how can I be back and connected with myself? Because you, you've lost yourself, right? Mm-hmm. 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 And you're, you're, and like I said, we're, 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 um, we've learned to just look at our physical. Oh, I hurt here. Mm-hmm. But you don't mm-hmm. realize that's emotional. It's spiritual. So, um, and then you go like this, you, okay, um, I'm sorry, you know, you're in pain. Um, I, I have to trust that I can heal myself. Mm. So we've lost it. Um, and, you know, I, I hate to say this, but the, the physicians, they'll, they'll say, okay, I can heal you. But they're not really healing you. You're healing yourself, mm. right? right? Mm-hmm. Well, they they can give you advice, and that would cause you to heal or not heal, depending on how much faith you think they can heal you or that you heal yourself. Mm -hmm. Because for me, after I went to a naturopathic doctor and then went to a Western doctor, they gave me different pieces of advice that I could compare to, Mm -hmm. you know, and maybe that's what, you know, Maxima offers is, is another type of modality to open yourself up to look at everything mm-hmm. maybe do you feel like you're you um, open people's thoughts to I believe so mm-hmm. um, I don't know if it has to do with opening people's thoughts but I think it has to do with allowing them to feel what peace feels like mm-hmm. mm. because everything starts to relax mm-hmm. and, and and like I said I can actually see when I'm doing the healing I can actually start to see everything uh, muscles start to relax and I can feel their spirit come back no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what you're saying is that when her arm had a temperature you know it showed heat in this area what was that it was it a she form of pent-up energy or spirit I mean, because it seems like it maybe could accumulate with stress, or is that? Yeah, if, if, 
if I didn't do the healing on mm -hmm. her, it's more prone to receive negative energy mm -hmm. and build up. And that's, that's how, um, when you're not feeling well, you start to get down on yourself. And if you, if you don't um, connect with spirit right there and then, because it, once you connect with spirit, you start to heal right away. Mm -hmm. But then you start to feel depressed about, oh, I, I don't feel good. I, 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 I'm starting to feel worse because you're giving that to yourself. You're, you're connecting to people. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're not feeling very well. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you start to feel depressed and then it, because you you've opened that it's like a wound mm -hmm. if you don't heal it right away it starts to spread mm -hmm. and get infected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so you're mm -hmm. infected and then you start connect uh, um, there's some people who who thrive on that mm -hmm. right and they right. go they, they know the right person to call because <laughs> that person's gonna say Oh, I feel so sorry for you, mm -hmm. and then you start to build right. it up. Right. Then, you, then we always say, "Okay, I have to connect with somebody positive," mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you start to yes. feel better. Yeah, right. yeah, and that's oh, all that well, is. Kind of people, <laughs> and, and it's really funny because I have to tell you a story. Um, um, I had a hysterectomy um, when I was, you know, in my teens, and it was really interesting because I was in a room. And all the nurses, I was like, oh, the, the nurses were so good. The doctors were so good. I, because I, I guess I, ha I was felt positive. Mm -hmm. And the nurses would come like um, less than every hour to come and see me and make sure that I, you know, I, I was fine and mm -hmm. you know, we'd, we'd chit chat. And later, it was really funny. That month, a la another lady, um, my coworker's wife, mm -hmm went to the exact same hospital on the same floor. I don't know if it was the same room. And I, I asked uh, my coworker, I says, well, how is your wife doing? He said, really bad. They, she, he said that um, she was on, they found her on, lying on the floor. They wouldn't um, uh, come and see her. It was like over an hour she was lying on the floor by, all by herself. But I, I, I asked uh, a few questions. And she was so negative. She said, I hated the nurses. The doctors were, were treated me really bad. Mm -hmm. And it was the same floor, the same hospital. Isn't that? Mm. <laughs> Where you were. I was so positive. And, 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 I, and I, went oh. to, I went back to work like um, in less than two weeks. Wow. No kidding. So yeah. your positive thoughts mm -hmm. helped. Mm -hmm. you. And then, you know, the nurses, I, I, I guess that they felt the energy. Mm -hmm. And you know that um, it, it really depends on, on how a nurse will treat you because if, if you've ever been to the, to the hospital, mm -hmm. you know what nurses, they're going to come and they're, gonna, you know, they, they're giving you love and thoughts. And you automatically mm -hmm. you start to feel better and you heal faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I and I know I, I won't say what hospital, but somebody said, "Oh yeah, you don't want to go to that hospital because they just like put you there and they don't come and see you." Mm -hmm. and, and and like I said, it, all it is is just that love. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, uh, you can feel the passion. It's like, for example, if you take your car to a mechanic, and you know you can you know mm -hmm. what mechanic is good because they're. The, the good mechanics put their passion into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They care. care. Yes. They care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it's actually the same thing because it's really funny. I, a computer wasn't working, and I'm like, oh my God, I did everything that I could. And then last, my last thought was, okay, I'm going to try this. Mm -hmm. So I put my hand on the computer. I was like, okay, I, I, I give it my, my love and my light. And then I opened it back up, mm -hmm. and I got, oh my God, it's working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they they have energy too. I mean, our laptops, our cell phones, they all have a crystal energy that responds to our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And like Emotion. the uh, iPhones, they're quite intuitive. But 
when you are, um, and I would do this when I worked for corporate, uh, you know, entities, is that when the copy machine was not working, <laughs> I went and pet the copy machine and <laughs> nice. said nice things to it. You know, same thing with my my truck. You know, when I am, you know, so grateful, I I'll kiss her on her, you know, on the steering wheel because she protects me, and I believe that she performs better when I'm loving her versus just pressing on the gas, pressing on the mm -hmm. brake. And is that, would you say that you're more of a, an activator of uh, having people appreciate their bodies or their thoughts? I would say so, but because um, when I put my hands on people, they'll like, wow, I, I haven't felt like that way before. Mm -hmm. And they become peaceful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but see, and the thing is, is that um, what no matter what you're doing, it's your mind, body, and spirit has to be one. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're doing, mm -hmm. because that make, that's what makes you better. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And you know, I right, right now too. I I feel like I'm in such a relaxed state, so much more relaxed than I was when I first walked in this room. Mm -hmm. A couple of hours ago and yet you just performed uh, the healing on just one side of my body but it just feels like my entire body is in a relaxed state mm -hmm. it's, interesting. it's hard to explain it, it, it it's not like they say it, it's something that you have to experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for example if you go to church um, a lot of people are just going through the process and they don't understand um, how to get the mind, body, and spirit back. Um, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Because it's just a process. A lot of it is just a process and you're listening to words. You're going, because I, I, I don't tell people, but I, I was brought up Catholic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was going through just the process. Mm -hmm. And I, I would sit there and I would listen to the lecture and then you go, okay, I have to do this again next Sunday. And you've forgotten all about what was said. <laughs> and I, I, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute. Okay, I, 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 I got to think back on um, what life is all about. And everybody, because it's just words, right? You're just receiving words. That, okay, I, I have to go through the process. I have to remember that i got to trust myself. I have to do this and I have to do that. And once I started just like, oh, forget it. <laughs> I can't remember all of that stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to just be. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to explain how to just be, mm -hmm. how to just just lie down on grass and the, and just lay there or or just go to the to the the pool and just lay there mm -hmm. it's like that's healing mm. just to be yeah. mm -hmm. we well, you know a lot of the yoga um, you know the fitness uh, you know the east eastern uh, healings have to do with breathing and uh, prana is it mm -hmm. is, is prana uh, the breath or is that a um, I would say it's the breath the, the prana breath, mm -hmm. prana so mm -hmm. taking deep breaths and getting good natural light getting getting good airflow getting good sunshine good water seems like a healthy a healthier uh, feel healing modality too but in this day and age not everyone can run out to the uh, you know to the ocean to take a dip are there other recommendations that you might uh, give someone for their environment, maybe? Yeah. Um, if you're at home, what you can do is um, make a, like a little corner, like a sacred place for yourself, wherever you um, relax, or if it's um, in your bedroom, where, wherever, or outside, even if it's just a little corner. Mm -hmm and say, I'm, this is like my sacred space. And I'm gonna, every time when I go in the sacred space, I'm just gonna be. 
any if you want whatever makes you feel good you can do um, what a, what you connect with it could be crystals um, a picture um, somebody you admire just put their picture there and um, let the energy be only of love every time when you sit there and every time when you do that and you exercise that because you you're, you're helping your spirit um, you're gonna feel that energy start to build Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you know and it's really funny because I, I've been to Bali and Japan um, all these other places and they either have a whole block that's a temple or a little alleyway that's a temple or at their house and we it, and they do offerings every single day and I'm like wow th it's so impressive because that's how they work on their spirit they mm -hmm. have this little section what no matter how big or how small mm -hmm. that's what they're doing a sacred space that you always keep sacred and you visit it mm -hmm. I see it. that's beautiful yeah and anytime you're in that space you just just sit there and just be of love or even light a candle mm -hmm. and it's just just a reminder mm -hmm. and and it's really hard because um in my experience when I've worked with clients um, they say, you know what, I couldn't have done this by myself. And I, I'm like, well, I don't know what to, you know, how, how do I teach other people to do this? But when, when they attend the session, it's just like what you're saying, is you, you, you sit there and you go, wow, this is what peaceful feels like. This mm -hmm. is what, I don't care what anybody says, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the thing, because you know what you were talking about because you're saying that okay there's yoga there's diet there's this and this and that I was like you know what I'm gonna eat what I want to eat I'm gonna <laughs> does, mm -hmm. does that make sense because mm -hmm. diet is like a fad every year it's a it's a different diet mm -hmm. okay diets are fads people don't see it that way but I do because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. next year there's going to be a new mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. eat mm -hmm. <laughs> and exactly. then they say okay you, you can't eat at McDonald's you can't do this you can't uh, eat like GMO or anything like that it's like okay I'm just going to be healthy and eat what I want to eat I'm yes. sorry yes I'm not going to because what happens is you're putting fear, fear again in your right. body mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. I'm supposed to do yoga. Oh, today I'm supposed to go ahead and do running. Uh, I, like I said, I don't even weigh myself, and I eat. I, I could eat something bad, and then I said, okay, I'm just gonna stay off. Moderation, right? Everything in moderation. Um, people who smoke mm -hmm. can <laughs> live to 100 years old. So what's up with that? Yeah. Because they have right, right, right. they have that spirit. Okay, so yeah. my, my father-in-law um, smoked, and he lived, I mean, he was in his 80s, and he smoked every single day of his life. But you wow. know what? He had that spirit. <laughs> <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> and it's your thoughts, you know. If you think that that is going to heal you, then it will, yeah. you know, and, and that's kind of how I think about food, too. I visualize everything as a salad going down, so that it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it comes from the earth somehow. Yeah. Yes. I thank everyone who touched it to bring it to exactly. my table, to bring it to heal me, and, you know, it's just a funner way of, of you know, putting my thoughts into it as it's going down. What I've seen others do is do their bills while they're eating and that's not healthy because here you are stressing about something that's it right. causes yeah, the true. food to transmute mm -hmm. to something that's gonna you know mm -hmm. not be good for you because of that feeling you know that thought that you have so i believe that maxima to me and of course i've had a healing from her as well is that she opened me up to have my own to be aware of my own thoughts I noticed that when I was on the you know table and she was running her hands through me that I could feel a, a presence and it was and I was an observer of the presence like she was a presence bringing this knowledge and wisdom and I was going 
what you were doing. What's happening to me? Mm -hmm. Wow, I feel energy going through me. Is that her or is that me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what, you know, am I helping? And then these other thoughts would mm -hmm. come through my th head. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll get through this, you know. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. it was, a, it was changed to hope, from just wondering what it was to actually saying, okay, I'm okay with it, mm -hmm. and thank you for letting me see it and feel it so I can, you know, release it and let go. Mm -hmm. And she was pushing her, pushing it through me, so that was... And quite, then how were you, how was your thoughts though? Did it... They were more relaxed. They were more uh, at ease, and like you said, they were at peace. Mm -hmm. And it felt like it felt like someone was listening to me mm. as I'm going through this energy, not not speaking to her, but that someone was listening to my thoughts and my and my energy, and and that I was I was analyzing who it was, you know, <laughs> because she had told me that she has these you know healers and shamans and and kahuna around her. And so I felt that presence of all of them working through her mm. to to heal me, and it was it was really I I trusted her. I trusted that I would get what I needed to out of this, and mm. and I think that's her, but the I vessel. Th I think you trusted more yourself, though. I trusted myself that you would help me. I mean, I, I, I do feel at some point we need each other. We're all a part of each other's dreams, and we can't do it, you know. We, we can do it all on our own. We can heal ourselves, but then it takes conduits and okay. vessels like Maxima and you and, and you to mm -hmm. to really pull out certain points of, my, of who I am mm -hmm. that I didn't take that perspective on. So, you know, like with her and, you know, all of you, being open to the information, mm -hmm. to, no, you know, I, there's no judgment, like she said, there's, you know, everyone has their own opinion, and it's as valid for you as it is for me, even though it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's your own thought, mm -hmm. but taking it into respect, you know, respect and, and humility that mm -hmm. we are wisdom, t you're my teacher as much as mm -hmm. she is, it, it all, you know, works. Mm -hmm. But when you go to see a healer like Maxima, she channels that energy directly into you. Mm -hmm. And that part is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you had any sessions with Maxima? Well, yeah, she did a brief sex, uh, session in the uh, edit bay, um, sitting there at the computer and just back pains and she just did a real quick thing. and. God, ever since that day, it's been, uh, I say that, I did healing with her that day, and then um, later the day was at Lemuria Technologies, the guy that had the machine that hits you with the EMFs, um, it cellular regenerates you, and so there's like a lot of healing in, in a day period, but um, yeah, it has, um, um, it hasn't been, hasn't been any bad, I mean, every day is really amazing, and, and being able to, to feel the healing from that day and to still feel it to this day mm -hmm. from a few minutes of touch or not even touch but uh, yeah I, I, I feel I carry it with me you know and um, so lucky to, to work with her and to, have, and to be around her because it radiates and uh, yeah this is just uh, so so lucky we're just so lucky to be here and be a part of that earlier with the, um, when we spoke with Gavin and um, he kept saying, you know, he, before he was a skeptic, and and how he didn't believe in, in energy medicine, and now um, he's very convincing that he does believe in it, and mm -hmm. and, and it's helped him, and uh, you know that's that should really open some eyes to to say, you know, this construction worker um, is now, you know, he almost got moved to tears. I noticed because he really felt it was real and true and, and helped him and uh, and he saw the passion that I he really was did. you know when he was speaking about uh, or his testimonial with uh, Maxima he was just super passionate and just like a believer and yeah. you know it's amazing yeah I don't know many doctors that, that leave patients feeling that way right. you know oh I can't wait you know I love going to my doctor yeah you know? <laughs> no but you know it, it's a different approach that we're dealing with on the show and and, and who we talk to and and that's um, 
that's why we do the show is to kind of bring that to, to awareness of, of people who may not have uh, that in their lives. Uh, like Gavin before he met Maxima, uh, you know, he was going to every doctor, ch chiropractor, taking pills and medicine and, and looking for uh, the cure outside of himself when Maxima kind of brought that uh, up in himself and, and it changed who he was and who he is. And uh, that's what this is all about. It's about um, changing ourselves for the better, like Maxima was saying, better and uh, we got to start with our thoughts because that's really where everything starts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. What it seemed to have opened in him was another way of healing because he had been subscribing to Western medicine uh, and wasn't aware that there were other types of healing modalities. So I know you have experience with Reiki and uh, also Kukuilani. Could you tell us about the different uh, modalities that you may have studied to come across this information? Mm -hmm. So uh, as being a, a Reiki master, um, and like I, I mentioned, it, it, it is systematic. There's certain ways that you put your hands. But when, when you start to connect, um, whether you want to, like I said, call it the universe or God or whatever, once you start connecting and you're, you're um, just being humble, just being, um, you start to receive messages. Mm. And you say, okay, I'm going to try it this way. And, and I always say, okay, somebody up there told me to do it this way. Okay, so one thing, um, as far as Reiki, you learn that you become one when, you, when you're healing. So I, I, I'm connecting you and me together. And um, God or universe told me, when you put your hands and you uh, are releasing the energy, make it go directly to the light. You don't have to have it go through you. If you make it go directly to the light, the healing will work faster. And um, I know that there are a lot of uh, mas massage therapists, they get tired, and also healers, um, they receive because they're, they're um, mm -hmm. taking the energy mm -hmm. from them, mm -hmm. and I don't do that. I tell people I, I never get sick because the, heal, the, the energy never touches me. Mm -hmm. It goes directly where it's supposed to go and I, I send it to the light. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, um, when I know that a client is ready, I teach them, and you, you remember you mentioned Ho'oponopono? And um, I learned that you don't have to do, um, there, there's like four things. And I tell the client, I says, all you have to do is say mahalo, and Thank aloha, you. and that's Love it. Love you. Yeah. Mm. So, because the words um, you mentioned, Doctor Emoto, and it, it the the um, crystal for aloha and mahalo, they're the most beautiful really? crystals. Wow. And that's why those are the only words that I I tell really? my client, because aloha is all the love mm -hmm. you, you say. Um, it's hello, goodbye. Um, everything mm -hmm. and then mahalo is the, the uh, gratitude mm -hmm. and that's the only hoponopono that you really need for yourself so when when you when you're trying to release um, for example pain so you do the aloha mahalo I love you thank you for being with me it's okay now you can go mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it and, and all of a sudden when you do that you, you feel the pain go it, 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 it released, we did a cancer patient, and, and it's all, 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 that's what we did. And oh my God, ugh, I just, th this cancer patient, I think she smoked, she didn't say, but I smelled the smoke mm -hmm. release. I was like, oh my no God. Yeah. yeah, it was this, this, she was holding all the smoke in her chest, her, mm -hmm. yeah. And I can feel all of that, and we, we, we just did the love and the thank you, thank you for being there. Um, because what happens is pain loves fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And every time you say, I want to get rid of you, I don't want you here, the pain gets bigger. Oh, I see. 
But then when you when you say um, and you put the love and light, and you put um, you just imagine that you're you're just giving a lot a lot of love and light to your pain. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, because the pain can't stand love, <laughs> it goes away. It goes away. Yeah, like uh, darkness can't dwell where there's light. Right. Yes. Right. And that's why I use love and love light. Love and light. Mm. And yeah. I, I, I um, tested this so many times. We were, we were at a, um, oh, what, what do you call it when um, th th there's a little, little tent and. and um, sweat lodge. Yeah, sweat lodge. sweat lodge. Okay, so we were we were in the sweat lodge, and um, all women. Okay, I think there were like twenty women there, and my Reiki master, uh, who's who was sitting next to me to my left, she starts going like this. She's going, pushing. Oh, she she was like, like. She looks at me and she's like, help, help me. I was like, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> and, I, and there was a lady sitting next to her. And I looked at her and, and she smiled at me. She, she had the sparkle in her eye, right? And I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing. But she, we're, we're, we're just pushing this. And I look on the other side of the fire and all the girls on the other side, the women on the other side, they were screaming and hollering, ah! And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And then the the um, guide, I, I guess, wh who would you call the the person who's the the facilitator? The facilita uh, facilitator. Mm -hmm. She says, okay, everybody, down, down to the ground, down to Mother Earth, as as, as close as you can go. Everybody down. And I'm like, okay, love and light. That's all. I'm not afraid of you. Love and light. And all of a sudden, I, I look across, and that other lady, I knew she was doing exactly the same thing because of the sparkle in her eye. Right. And everybody was just like, quiet. It was like, wow. Mm. And I'm like, and, and I tested that so many times. It, it, it's always the love and light mm -hmm. that fights off whatever is in So there. what do you think was this energy that the lady saw that she was asking you to move? I, it was a bad energy. Um, so she was like trying to push it away. Into I think it was trying. Or? She was trying to push it into the fire, mm -hmm. but I think what what really was needed is just the love and light to be put mm -hmm. in there, and then once the love and light was there, it went, it, it's like um, they said it's like a bubble. It just like pops, wow. and it just left. This is all interesting. Yeah, wow. I don't know how how many times I've I've work with so many people of how this works and it works instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's all you have to do. But you see, you have to have the love and light in your heart already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say um, it's it's a the spiritual muscle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that you also bless homes. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? What is your healing um, the what the Hawaiians do is they have they use the tea leaves. That's their um, uh, the tea leaves is sacred, and it and you use the um, whether it be Hawaiian salt or you can just get the ocean water, and you dip the leaves into the salt water, and you sprinkle it with the intention. Of just sending love and light and what you do is anywhere there's like a mirror or an open area or window because that's how things come in within your house and you just bless it and you like I said intention of love and light and then just sprinkle it around and then all of a sudden you just feel the house feel so light mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I noticed um, one of the things that because you know as a spiritual realtor she was she was teaching me how to bless a house and one of the things that compelled me about her teaching was that um, when she said to go and get the water from the ocean she actually said that I need to take flowers to, to the, the ocean, ocean to, to ask the ocean if it was okay to take the water for the blessing so it seems that Every part of the process of, of he blessing the house 
was yeah. from the beginning when I was asked to bless the house to that my thoughts are all, mm. all my and actions are always toward uh, mm -hmm. healing and even to um, picking the leaves because you have to ask mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to use this for a blessing is it okay that I use you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you talk to everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, th th that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then you also spoke about uh, dousing. Do you use dousing uh, rods in your blessing as well, as a healing a person? Um, and like I say, it to me, it's more of a teaching tool since I already know where mm -hmm. where I need to um, do the healing. It's just for the person to see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's it's only something. Uh, to put trust in, to say, mm -hmm. oh, this does really work, wow, mm -hmm. I can do this th myself. Because um, once they learn that, they could go home and try it themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go, oh, that's where the energy is. And then they, they just put their own love and light into it. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And so uh, your book, My Journey Through Healing, where can, uh, where can we find that? Um, it's at the bookstore, and I'll, it's also um, on Amazon.com, okay. and you, and people can download it as a um, an e-book. E-book. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maxima. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we appreciate your, uh, you know, I would call it outside the box uh, yeah. way of thinking and healing in terms of you know what we go to a doctor for. I would consider you uh, more like a shaman or a healer, but very similar to mm -hmm. uh, uh, indigenous culture, mm -hmm. uh, someone that maybe our innate ability is opening up to now. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for helping mm -hmm. us to remember who we really are mm -hmm. you know, so we can help heal ourselves. And you know, thank you for opening us up to mm -hmm. that. And I appreciate yeah. all of you. Appreciate you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Maxima. <laughs> and stay tuned for uh, upcoming our upcoming Holistic Hawaii TV series. I am Karen Gomes. I'm Claire Bajo. And I'm Zach Royer. We'll see you soon and aloha. Take care. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, this is Karen Gomes, and uh, today we are, uh, I'm here with Maxima Forslin on Holistic Hawaii TV, and um, we're, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, Maxima is going to perform a, a healing session on me. Uh, several weeks ago, I injured my, my right arm golfing. Um, as I swung my, my club down, it grounded, and basically my, my wrist pulled back, which caused uh, an injury to my arm, and um, it's been three weeks now and the pain has uh, become substantially worse. So I'm here seeking out uh, Maxima who also does uh, Kukuilani healing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So basically what we did was uh, we took an infrared photo of her arm and we noticed that there's a lot of energy in this area. So um, we can see a little bit of energy up here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my hands and start moving the energy. And um, Karen is going to go ahead and explain what she's feeling so that um, we can understand what the energy is doing. Okay? So I'm, I'm hardly going to touch her. And at this point I can feel energy. So um, do you feel warm where my hands are? Yes, I feel it primarily where my, my hand is, uh, on the top of my hand. Okay. And then that's where we felt um, most of the energy mm -hmm. being held. So yeah, now I, I can feel the energy um, start to move on my, my right hand. Okay, so um, what I'm feeling is the um, intense energy on the top of your hand mm -hmm. and, um, and it's actually already releasing it's starting to release what do you feel yeah is this as though it, I feel a warm sensation is that that's calming? the that's the energy mm -hmm. and um, you 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 felt the um, the heat was a little warmer but it's gonna start to cool off that means that the energy is starting to move and 
you're starting to feel um, the healing. Mm -hmm. And um, how's the pain in your elbow? I don't, I don't feel the pain in my elbow, but what I'm, I'm also feeling is under, under my arm, I'm feeling a, a like a little tingling sensation. Um, and then now I'm feeling, it's almost like a, a, a back and forth flow on my, the top of my forearm. So it's like, um, it's opening up, um, so your muscles, you probably feel your muscles um, starting to relax. Mm -hmm. Because when you have pain, your, your muscles tighten. And then, so basically, um, I'm present here, just sending love and light. And the, the um, muscles feel that energy. And actually, I, I'm, I'm starting to feel, oh, right here. It's more intense right here. And oh, started to cool, it started to cool off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel it right here in your shoulder. So basically what I do is I, 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 I move my hands back and forth and then I let my hands stay where the body tells me it needs um, to release the energy or if there's stuck energy. Mm. Yeah, it's still right here. Mm -hmm. you feel it right mm -hmm. there? And it also feels relaxed. My muscles feel extremely relaxed. Oh. So you see, do you feel that? Mm -hmm. It's starting to release. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because it's intense right now. And now I can, um, you'll, you'll eventually feel it start to cool off. Now it's cooling. Mm -hmm. So you, you felt the pain here, mm -hmm. but it was, the energy was here. That, oh, it, it wanted to release out here. I see, I see. Yeah. What's it feel like? Yeah, under my, under my palms are nice and cool. Oh, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so anything that, any excess energy that you felt, it's, um, you, you felt it going out your fingers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's where I feel everything being, it's almost like a release. Yeah, and, and it either, uh, energy has to release somewhere. So a lot of times it goes out the fingers or out the toes or out the head. So, um, so it feels a lot better. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you had any swelling, the swelling will go um, down. You'll so just go like this. And then how, how's your how does your elbow feel now? It's not as it's not as intense now because now I can squeeze where you couldn't before. I couldn't. Okay. So isn't it funny that the energy showed more here than in the elbow? Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do the. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see. Aha! You're gonna be impressed. <laughs> um, remember how it was intense, um, intense heat here? Mm -hmm. Oops. <gasps> Wow. <laughs> wow. It was like a ball of light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now the energy, but you'll still feel the energy releasing. Yeah, I still feel there, like, I feel like that there's tingling out of my fingers. Exactly. Is that, is that the way it's supposed to feel? Yes, because you still have um, energy within your knuckles and it's still releasing. 
Wow. So you'll hold the healing energy for a while. Wow. So. Thank you so much, Maximo. You're welcome. I couldn't do this. You know when I would wash the dishes and squeeze out the sponge, I used to have to go on my left hand. I can squeeze now. And that's when you um, had the injury? That Since the injury, for okay. about three weeks now. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you can also find her on uh, MaximaMay.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Stay tuned. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. So we're just going to go ahead and ask um, the angels and the um, um, spirits, God, the universe, and we thank them for uh, bringing the Leo Television to us in this beautiful building. Um, and we search for the words that need to be heard by the community. And I'll, we only bring the love and light into this space. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Maxima. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank everybody for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. For, for having us in your presence. <laughs> what an honor, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, um, today we're speaking with um, Gavin Todd uh, on Holistic Hawaii Living. Um, Gavin is, uh, ha has experienced healing with Maxima, um, and he's going to give a little bit of his experience and his testimonial today on our show. Excellent, yeah, it's, it's uh, unusual. I, I find it remarkable that uh, I would be the one to be here to be talking about this and you know follow along with me because it's going to be hard to articulate these kind of things the exp I've been asked to talk about this experience but I don't think most people have ever experienced anything like this so it's really hard to find the exact words and after seeing Maxima for uh, weeks now we've had many discussions and trying to talk and I you know exhausted her with a million questions of trying to get to the <laughs> bottom of why how is it that you're able to do these things but it's Remarkable. I was uh, born and raised here on the Big Island, and uh, uh, you know, worked here for many years. I, I moved away to the mainland, found my wife, brought her back here about nine years ago. After you know, just the hustle and bustle of the mainland was just enough. You know, it was not very fulfilling. There's something about home; it, it brings you back. You know, my parents, everyone's back here, and coming back to the island, it it just made sense. And uh, I was working for the family, working in construction. Ended up uh, injuring my lower back, which I know a lot of people experienced. I've run into so many people. And a lot of them have very similar stories. They all go through, you know, being work injured on the job, they have a set things, a checklist of what you need to do. They have these rehab programs. They have uh, different kinds of everything, chiropractic, acupuncture, all these different things down the list. Um, I had been injured to the point where I was completely incapacitated and I had a, a one-year-old at home. So there's my poor wife taking care of me and my little girl. It was just, I, I promised, that's not going to happen. I'll do anything they tell me to. And I did, and I had gone for uh, anything they would throw at me. I, I went for chiropractic, which would give me relief in a day or two, but it was never a long-lasting thing. It was never a complete, you know, uh, realignment or anything. And, and the more and more as time went on after going through the rehab process and working out, finding that I'm never going to be the same again. A lot of talking to different people, they were like, you know, you just have to accept it. This is it. You know, your life... It was one way before, you just have to accept it now. And it's very difficult for me. And I, I refuse to believe that. These doctors telling me, no, That's we can it. fix you. We can yeah. do it. We've got the drugs. We've got the, the program. I even went to the point where I even saw a doctor to get those steroid injections into my lower back. I mean, and if you are willing to put like a six-inch needle right by your spine, uh, you know, you're willing to do anything. You know, I'm, I really was trying to find a cure. And each one of these had benefits but they were all either short term or they were not the cure that would allow me to. I still had this huge regiment of just trying to function from day to day, never knowing if this is the day that my back's just going to give out. And my friends have told me stories like when they just sneeze and the back goes out. And that's when uh, I came to find Maxima. I had a good friend who turned me on to you and then said, you should go see her, you know. And this is a hardened Jersey guy, you know. This is where he's from. He's just like, hey, you should go see her. You're great things, you know. And I'm like... <laughs> This guy's okay. I will, like I said, I'm open. I'll try anything. It's been years of this. I've got nothing to lose. And uh, 
it's just so wonderful to come into your presence and, and, and just in talking with you over the phone Thank immediately, you. I felt that that presence of uh, just the calmness and the peace and I thought, oh, she's interesting. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> let's go. What have I got to lose, right? We'll, we'll go and check it out. And, so what was your first experience uh, it like? Was just incredible because of the fact of how low-key it was. I really didn't know what to expect and my friends who had recommended Maximo did not say anything, gave me any kind of warning because he hadn't experienced it himself but he had many folks that had, had success with this. So I thought, okay, I, I'm willing to try. Let's go find out. Let's keep an open mind and just walk in. And I was expecting something like, she was gonna have me stand on one foot with the, you know, <laughs> tinfoil in the air and then do some chant and spin around. I didn't know what, I was like, and I'm like, okay, well, what have I got to lose? I'll be a little embarrassed afterwards, whatever. We'll take a shot. But um, it was this thing of just sitting down and talking with her, ex explaining what had happened in the long process to get here. And she just simply asked, you know, would you be open to it, trying a healing? And I'm like, that's your heart cell? That's how you're like, <laughs> that's how you're going to, okay. That just took me by surprise. I thought she was going to give me this long thing of this spiritual journey and this, you know, this, this mystical type of thing to get me to be in that mindset. No, it was simply like, would you be interested? And I was like, yes, I am. It was so <laughs> inviting and so warm. And, and again, your presence, I just thought, okay, fine. So, so where do we have to go? You go out to the So she laid garden. you on no, the Reiki? No, I was sitting right there in the same chair, right. like these wow. office chairs. Okay. And she said, just sit there. And I was expecting we're going to go out to the garden or something and meditate. <laughs> no, no, no. It was nothing, nothing like that. I, I, she just said, sit, be calm, have my arms down. And I thought, okay, I'm ready for anything. She stood up, walked behind me, and almost instantly I felt heat mm. radiating on my back and I'm like okay what's going on here that's a nice trick and it went on and I, I was being polite you know remember to be calm and I thought I've got to look I've got what is she doing back there and I had to look like does she have hand warmers or something on there I'm like what she was just standing behind me with her hands mm -hmm. and just up in the air she wasn't talking to me or trying to pull something out of me you know and I was like I said I didn't know what to expect I really didn't expect that you know this simple okay and then the heat began to move in the bubble, and it's very hard to articu articulate the feelings, this bubbling, this, this, uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, sh uh, shaking loose, you know, le of, of letting go mm. of these, this, this, uh, what we've, we've come to talk about uh, through, through uh, meeting with Maxima, is this stuck energy, this kind of feeling that everything's been locked up. When you get injured, your body does physically, I mean, it, it just locks up and it tries to protect you and goes, okay, I got you, buddy. You're not going to fall apart. And it just locks up forever. And you feel like, like a, a, you know, a, a cramp in your leg all the time or something. But it's you know, your low back just locked up. Completely takes your mobility away. It hurts. And chasing after a young girl like I do, my little daughter, like, no, 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 get off the couch. No, no, come back. Get, get, get. You know, everything's with your back. And you don't run into traffic, you know. And, and you're just like <laughs> holding on for dear life, just wondering what's going to set it off. And here I was just sitting in the chair. And she's just radiating this heat. I'm like, oh, this feels wonderful. I feel peaceful. This is great. And I'm going, well, that's nice. But then as time went on, the minutes passed, and it began to just, like I said, bubble and move and kind of start to flow, release. Uh, it's, it's hard to describe that feeling because I don't think a lot of us have had that kind of a thing. I, I wish I could tell you that it was just like, well, you know, it's like when you, you jump off something and you land on a big soft pillow like a cloud. No, it's not <laughs> like that. It's It's... It's very, um, like I said, like a, like a heat radiating through. A tingling It tingles, sensation. it pulses a little bit, it feels. Mm. And just by sitting there and simply being open to it, I experienced this feeling of releasing the pressure and it began to flow and it went through my arms and I felt it. And I know it sounds so funny for me to even say these words really right now. I'm like, wow, I must mm. sound just crazy. But if I hadn't experienced it myself, I couldn't tell you this. Verbatim, that's just what happened. I just, I didn't do anything, stand up or anything. And I'm like, is she pumping gas into this room or something, making me think that there's something? But no, it really was this feeling. Several minutes had passed, and I completely felt almost, uh, you know, that, that drunken sensation of just you're loose and free. And it's, I, it's such a hard thing to describe. Uh, but I really was, it, it was to the point where I, after I, leaving Maxima, I had to just sit in my car. I was like feeling like I can't drive yet. Hold on, I'm yeah. just going to sit here for a minute and collect myself because it was just this Heavy. feeling of release. Mm -hmm. It was just so 
wonderful and peaceful. The first person I had come to that was really interested in what's going on with me, mm -hmm. what's happening, let's take time, let's dive in, let's make it better. And I've, I've always felt like everybody else is on the clock. i got to get to the next patient. Okay, okay, we do this, we do this, all right, moving on. And, you know, we do this checklist. Okay, good, all right, bye-bye, see you next week. And it was never that thing of I'm getting somewhere, I'm pro progressing, you know, so. It's been wonderful. And, and you, re you remember in the past where the doctors really cared? You, you mm -hmm. feel that right. love. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, 10 minutes, next person. Mm -hmm. and you, you don't get that love anymore. Well, we can hope that the new paradigm of, uh, you know, pharmaceutical will be F-A-R yeah. <laughs> and Maxima's type of healing. Because you're the doctor. You're your own doctor. Uh -huh. If you think that any other doctor is going to tell you what you need to do to heal yourself, then you're putting someone, your life in someone else's hands that may not know you. I think what Maxima does is she gives you the opportunity to heal yourself. She's just directing energy. Mm -hmm. you know, she's yeah. not giving yes. you a prescription for anything. Wow. She's just moving her energy through you to heal, to get out whatever, you know, yeah. may not be serving you or any, you know. Yes. And it's like yes. a kind of house cleaning for the body. <laughs> <laughs> Which, would That's you so that? great. That's it because you do yes. cluttered up this cluttered mind. You're carrying all this junk around with you. You yeah. don't realize how much it all weighs after a while. That's exactly right. It really does. She opens that up. And I, I tell you, the benefits are just amazing for that reason. You can get to the other side of this and go, Hey, it, it, things aren't so bad because that's it. No matter what a doctor tells you, and I think that's the mistake I've taken, done all these years was I'll do whatever they say. I'm gonna never miss an appointment. I'm gonna do all that stuff. I'm gonna do all my training and every day. I'm gonna stretch and do my workout. And it was like I trusted in them. I didn't trust in myself to believe mm. that you know what you are gonna get better. It's gonna be okay. You got this. Mm. And I didn't even do that. I forgot that whole step or something. Mm -hmm. And Maxwell kind of woke me up to that whole thing. And she didn't introduce anything new into me. All these ideas, all these feelings were in there. It's almost like a reorganization. It's like you come at peace with that. Like, you know what? Yeah, okay, we're bad, but we're going to get better. <laughs> and guess what? Oh, and it's oh, not oh, like oh. this, ther it, was, it almost felt like a, a therapy session, but really to physically feel that moving through you, it, it's, it's quite an unreal experience, I think, to, to, to feel it manifest itself inside you. From within yourself, you like you said, you carry that around with you. You don't realize how much junk it is. You don't need it. Well, and it sounds like she <laughs> she kind of opens up to your own inner knowledge because mm -hmm. now you know, man, I can heal myself. I you know, you got this. that little attitude going. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I wish I could do what Maxima does, because believe me, I've laid there at night quietly and tried to think, like, if well, I could we've, just... We've had conversations. <laughs> I, I, I always... Well, you're right. I have to learn from my clients, because I was like, okay, so how can I help you? <laughs> what can I do to help you to do oh. this for yourself? Because that's my gift. I said, so I have to bring out the person, because everybody's different. And as, so the question is, is, how do you love your, how can you learn to love yourself? How could you give back the self-esteem that you lost? Mm. So, yeah, yeah. That's and though. that's the healing part of it. How, exactly. yeah. And so I, I say, well, what, what, what makes you happy? What, what brings out the passion in you? What makes your heart sing? Mm. And that's the healing. And mm. once you get the answer, because I, I cannot answer that, mm -hmm. the client has to answer. And that's very good because you are, everybody's different. And what the doctors are doing, like I said, they have a checklist. They go down the list, okay, we tried this, we tried this. Now working, you know, good luck. Here's a, you know, <laughs> here's some or more they'll pills. Say, and, you need surgery. Yeah, and I can yeah. pay for my child's, you know, college fund yeah. with that. You know? you yeah. So you want to be careful. That's why well, you don't want to depend so much on their, you know, that, that you want to be open to all thought processes mm -hmm. because you can evaluate what's best for you. And, you know, like, the same thing happened to me. I went to mm -hmm. the doctor. They told me chemo, radiation, mm -hmm. or surgery. And I said, someone told me that I could heal myself. Mm -hmm. And she said she would help me. So I said, I can do this then. It's if empowering, I have isn't just it? just one yeah. person that <laughs> believes that I can heal myself. Mm -hmm. And yet, we have a whole world of people, you know, available but they come they're coming more and you know co you know we're hoping that people like maxima can be 
all of us, you know, being able to heal ourselves and teach others through our thoughts. But, you know, you have professionals to come to. Like, I consider Maxima as a more of a shaman mm -hmm. type of healer. She, she comes with the knowledge from the ancestors that she's calling through her. And there's, you know, like wisdom teachers and then, uh, you know, people like me who are students of the, mm -hmm. of the process, you know. But well, I hadn't been. That's what was so alarming with this whole thing. Really, really waking me up. I had not, I'm not an exceptionally religious person or have all these different belief systems in place. Like I said, I had a lot of trust in the doctors. I thought if you follow these steps, we get to here. I didn't come with a lot of that. And in, in working with Maxima, in, in talking with her in these, in these sessions, it, it hasn't felt like... Like I said, I thought I would have to do something to get out of myself. I thought she, she and, and then when I'm not paying attention, she'd pull a fast one on me. And it's like, no, she did in a completely different way. She did. She got me to realize that you can heal from within yourself. And just allow yourself that, that, that gift of, you know what, you can. You do heal yourself is exactly right. And your doctor will tell you that if you do. If you, you, you do have to clean the cut first. You have to take care of those things. That's true. But your body heals from within, within itself, and it fights these things off. And it does if you allow to, if you're in the right frame of mind, if you do the steps that you need to do, and the mind and body, like I was saying, is connected, and oh. you have to, you can't discount that, and you are, you're like a shaman, you've actually mm -hmm. guided me through that way, it's like, you know what, come to this door. There's no, you know, the industry is so strong and in place, it really has this feeling that if you take this pill, you'll lose weight, you'll feel better, you'll, you know, like yourself more, it's like these things that change your chemistry, whereas that's not a long-term fix, that's not a thing that completes you, you have those feelings, you have those things, that you just gotta allow them to happen. Anyway, thank Wonderful. you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so thank, much. You. <laughs> thank you, Gavin, for coming Absolutely. here and thank sharing. You. It's such a great opportunity to see what Maxima really does from the receiving side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I felt, I just, I had to get this out because I'm going, I'm so unlike the person that would seek someone out, what you do. It really just happened almost by chance, by, by whatever reason, just, I was open to it. I really can't say it was any harder than that. <laughs> and I've benefited greatly from that. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us on the Leo Public Access Television, <laughs> Channel 53. And we look forward to uh, getting more interview from Maxima Forsland. She's a healer, but she's also an amazing computer technologist, <laughs> uh, yeah. author. She's <laughs> written a book on healing and self-development. And she's also one of the uh, executives or uh, managers or producers here at Nileo Public Television. So thank you so much.